Hi, today we will discuss the drugs that increase the QT interval. First one is the potassium channel blockers. So potassium channel blockers like the amiodarone, dronidarone, sotalol, all these are the class 3 antiarrhythmic agents. These class 3 antiarrhythmic agents are directly blocking the potassium channels. When the potassium channels are blocked, hyperpolarization is going to be prevented, thereby leads to the persistent depolarization, which may result in the increase in the QT interval. So that's why potassium channel blockers are called as proarrhythmic agents. That means these agents, even they are used as an antiarrhythmic agents, but they can produce another form of cardiac arrhythmias. So whenever these drugs are given, ECG should be thoroughly checked at a regular intervals. And if any increase in the QT interval is observed, these drugs should be replaced with the other drugs. Second one is the cardiotonics. So desoxin is one of a cardiac glycoside, which can act as a cardiotonic. And desoxin can inhibit one of the important pumps, sodium potassium ATPase pump, which is present on the cardiac membrane, responsible for the restoring of the ionic levels after the depolarization. So when this pump is going to be inhibited, actually by sequential steps, it increases the intracellular calcium levels, which increase the force of contraction. So that's why desoxin acts as a cardiotonic. Apart from this increase in the force of contraction, the desoxin can also increase the intracellular sodium levels because it is going to inhibit the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Sodium is not going outside. So intracellular sodium levels are going to be abnormally increased. And when these are excessively increased, again, they produce depolarization, which may increase the QT interval in the ECG. Third one is the typical antipsychotics. Many of the typical antipsychotics can produce the prolongation of the QT interval. Chlorpromazine is one of the well-used drug in the class of phenothiazines. And similarly, thioredazine, both of these drugs belong to the phenothiazine category. Similarly, another drug like the pimozide. Pimozide is one of a piperidine derivative. And haloperidol. Haloperidol is a butyrophenone derivative, which is just acting like the phenothiazines. All these are the typical antipsychotics. These drugs can also increase the QT interval. And probably this may be due to their action on the HERG potassium channels. Thereby they can prolong the QT intervals. Fourth one is the atypical antipsychotics. So atypical antipsychotics like the ziprasidone as well as iloperidone and quetiapine. All these drugs are having a chance to increase the QT interval and they can precipitate the torsade D point is. Actually, atypical antipsychotics are having less extrapyramidal side effects and uh, other side effects. But these three drugs are having a chance to increase the QT interval so that they can precipitate the torsade D point is. So whenever these drugs are given, if any other drug which increases the QT interval should not be combined, otherwise it can lead to the fatal cardiac arrhythmias. And another atypical antipsychotic is there like the clozapine and related drugs like the volangepine as well as another drug eripiprazole these drugs are having somewhat less risk of the torsade D point is compared with the, the above three drugs. Next one is the antihistamines. Antihistamines like the astimazole and terfenadine. These two drugs are going to increase the QT interval and they have precipitated the torsade D point is. And that's why these two drugs are going to be withdrawn from the market. Nowadays, we cannot observe these two drugs in the market because they are having a potential risk for increase in the QT interval and precipitation of the torsade D point is. And instead of the terfenadine, now we have the fexofenadine, one of the metabolite we have, fexofenadine, which is available in the market, which is having the less risk of uh, increase in the QT interval. And similarly, another drug is the mesolastin. Mesolastin is also having some chance of increase in the QT interval, but compared with the astimazole and terfenadine, this drug is having somewhat less risk in increase in the QT interval. Next one is the hydroxygine. Hydroxygine is also one of an antihistamine, but it can be used as an anxiolytic. And this drug is mainly used to treat the allergic skin reactions. Some of the skin allergy like the contact dermatitis, hives, pruritis, all these can be controlled by hydroxygine. Hydroxygine is available uh, as a brand name Atarex. This is widely used to treat the allergic skin reactions. And hydroxygine can also decrease the anxiety. So it can also be used to treat the anxiety, which may be associated with some allergic reactions. And hydroxygine can also induce some sleep. So because of all these, it can be used in the allergic skin reactions. But this drug 
is also having some risk of increase in the QT interval under therapeutic doses it will have a less risk but when it is used for a repeated uh, doses for a prolonged period there is a chance of increase in the QT interval so whenever hydroxygen is given for a longer period the QT interval should be thoroughly checked next one is the reticabine reticabine is also called as azogabine this azogabine is one of the drug which is going to stimulate the KCN Q2 channels which are the potassium channels these channels are particularly present in the neurons and when these potassium channels are going to be activated they are going to produce the hyperpolarization even it is going to stimulate the potassium channels and produce the hyperpolarization but interestingly this drug can also increase the QT intervals even this drug is going to produce hyperpolarization within the neurons which may be responsible for its anti epileptic action but still this drug may reduce the hyperpolarization within the cardiac membrane and can increase the QT interval within the ECG so because of its uh, action on the potassium channels azogabine can be used to treat the partial seizures but still this drug can increase the QT interval by affecting the hyperpolarization within the heart next one is the moxifloxacin Fluoxacin indicates is a fluoroquinolone. So moxifloxacin is the fourth generation fluoroquinolone, and this drug is going to delay the rectifier potassium channels. The potassium channels are going to be opened within the phase two as well as phase three. These potassium channels can be classified as a rapid potassium channels as well as slow potassium channels. So rapid potassium channels are going to be opened within the phase two, and slow potassium channels are going to be opened within the phase three. Now this delayed rectified potassium channels are going to be activated within the phase 2 which can be blocked by moxifloxacin. So when these potassium channels are blocked hyperpolarization within the phase 2 is not going to be achieved which may produce some persistent depolarization. So that's why moxifloxacin can increase the QT interval. And here one of the important point is that moxifloxacin may lead to so many drug interactions which may again precipitate the the fatal cardiac arrhythmias like the torsade D point is. For example, when the moxifloxacin is given along with the grapefruit juice, grapefruit juice is one of a metabolic enzyme inhibitor. The grapefruit juice can inhibit the metabolic enzymes like the cytochrome P450 enzymes and when these enzymes are going to be inhibited, moxifloxacin is not going to be metabolized thoroughly so that its levels are going to increase within the plasma. And when the moxifloxacin levels are going to be excessively increased, it may precipitate the torsade D point is. So this is one of a significant drug food interaction observed with the moxifloxacin. Next one is the SSRIs and SNRIs. The selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors which we call the SSRIs. So drugs like the cytolopram and acytolopram. Acytolopram is nothing but the S isomer of the cytolopram. These drugs can increase the QT interval. Similarly SNRIs. One of the important SNRIs is the venlafaxin. Venlafaxin is having a high risk for increasing the QT interval. Another related drug like Desvenlafaxin is having the less risk for the increase in the QT interval. Next one is the tricyclic antidepressants. So many TCS are there which may increase the risk of uh, torsade D point is. For example, we have imitriptyline, nortriptyline, imipramine, desipramine, clomipramine, even maprotyline. All these drugs can increase the QT interval and they can precipitate the torsade D point is. So tricyclic antidepressants again can block the HERG potassium channels, thereby they can increase the depolarization and they can precipitate the torsade D point is. Again, TCS shows so many drug interactions. So whenever these drugs are given, we have to thoroughly check for any chance of drug interaction. And if any levels of these TCS are going to be increased, they may precipitate uh, torsade D point is. Next one is the atypical antidepressants. Just like the antipsychotics, atypical antidepressants generally will have less side effects. But among these, one of the drug is the mirtazepine. Mirtazepine is one of the drug which can block the alpha-2 receptors. And this drug can also block the other receptors like the 5-HT2 and 5-HT3 receptors. By all of these, it can produce some antidepressant activity. But again, the mirtazepine is having some risk of producing torsade D point is. So whenever this drug is given, we have to check the QT interval. Next one is the telavancin. Telavancin is one of a lipoglycopeptide. This drug is having the two important moieties, lipomoiety as well as glycomoiety. So it is both water soluble as well as lipid soluble and it is one of peptide in nature. This lipoglycopeptide is going to act by inhibition of the cell wall synthesis. 
So telavancin is a drug somewhat related to the vancomycin. Vancomycin is a glycopeptide which also inhibits the cell wall synthesis. Vancomycin will not produce any increase in the QT interval, but this telavancin can increase the QT interval. This drug is particularly used in the few of the bacterial infections like the MRSA, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus infections, as well as VREF, vancomycin resistant enterococcal fecium. In such types of resistant strains, the telavancin can be used. But whenever this drug is going to be used, again we have to check for the prolongation of the QT interval. In this way, we have a list of drugs which may increase the QT interval, and still we can add few of the anti malarials like the quinolins can also increase the QT interval. And sometimes some of the drug interactions may also lead to the prolongation of the QT interval. Just we have seen metabolic enzyme inhibitors as well as grapefruit juice can increase the QT interval so that they can precipitate the torsi D point is. For example, azole antifungals are the potent uh, metabolic enzyme inhibitors. They can also increase the QT interval when they are given with uh, any of the other drugs which are having a risk for the torsi D point is. So that's about the various drugs that increase the QT interval and this list is not complete. Still we can add so many drugs which may increase the QT interval but we have covered here very important drugs which increase the QT interval and increase the risk of the torsi D point is. So if you like this video please subscribe to our channel and post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.